this video is devoted to Spain. We will talk about Spanish people, culture, uh, job opportunities, taxes, uh, and whether it's hard or easy to register your business and uh, how uh, difficult it is to uh, get a residence permit in Spain. Uh, I will have interview with Miss Arina, who has been living in Spain for several years and she will uh, share her own experience. Thank you so much, Arina, for joining us today and sharing your experience about Spain. I am sure it's amazing. Um, can you please tell me when did you move to Spain and how many years have you been living there? Um, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this podcast show because I really believe in your podcast show and I believe this conversation can help people and maybe people you know, your friends, or maybe other listeners on YouTube to understand what is Spain and how to move to Spain. So thank you so much for the invitation. It means so much to me. Uh, regarding your question, actually, it's quite ironic because I was thinking about this maybe three, four days ago. Uh, I moved to Spain exactly one year ago. So right now it's a kind of a summary of the whole my experience in Spain. And I'm so excited to share because I have a lot of things I did and I'm doing right now and I want to share this experience with me. So I moved to Spain uh, in April last year. So what uh, do you do now? What kind of job uh, are you engaged in? Yeah, sure. Um, right now I'm working in one, one Web3 marketing agency. It's called Hype. Yes, a really cool agency, one of the most popular, most famous ones in Web3. They're located in Berlin, in Germany, but all my colleagues, they are all around the world. So right now I'm in Spain, for instance, my manager, he's in Poland right now. So we have, I would say, diverse uh, team members. Um, regarding uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm like a growth ops manager. So I'm trying to create growth strategies for different companies. I'm doing research for different companies, clients, and also I'm creating a data platform. So right now uh, there is a big problems with data and I'm trying to make sure there is a big structure for campaigns, post launch. So that's what I'm doing right now. And also I'm working like a freelancer as a marketing manager. So that's my whole experience. Yeah. Great. So this is what I want to ask you more about because you are living in Spain and you are paying taxes in Spain. So before we go to how you got your residence permit and what was the purpose of the residence permit, like how, how is, was it possible to get it? Uh, I would like uh, to ask you about the tax system in Spain. How are you paying the taxes? How does it work? Uh, do you think it's uh, high taxes there? Is it uh, low taxes? So yes, please. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I think I need to divide this topic in two parts. So there are yeah. different types of taxes. The first one and is when you work a company. For a company, just a typical contract, work contract, you work in for two, three years and you pay taxes. So company helps you to pay taxes. Usually it's maybe 30%. But plus they play secu uh, social security for you, they, they do everything for you. But sometimes it can be from 30 to 40 percent, really. Okay. So uh, it's really important. So the half of your income you're earning, you need to give to the Spain uh, government, Spanish government. Um, regarding me, I'm working like as individual entrepreneur. It's called Autonoma. So I pay taxes on my own. I pay for social security on my own. So I pay everything for myself. But uh, every Spanish person, every Spanish has its own uh, personal uh, accountant. It's called assessor. So my assessor, she helps me to pay all these taxes and also she helps me to pay less taxes because there are some laws uh, in every province and you can decrease your taxes. So I, every Spanish has assessor and it helps because I can do it on my own, but it's really complicated. And this Spanish language is really complicated, especially regarding taxes, accounting, economics. And I just understood now I need personal accountant and she helps me with everything. So that's how it works usually. Yeah. And I pay 20%, by the way. Yeah. Okay, I see. So if you are a registered entrepreneur, you pay less than if you are an uh, employed uh, person uh, working for a company, right? So. If you, we are talking about, I will ask you about how did you manage to register your company, your own company in Spain, because it's not easy, I know. Uh, before we go uh, to that question, I want you to ask about residence permit, about paperwork in uh, Spain bureaucracy, as everyone says, right? 
uh, was it easy or hard for you to get a residence permit in Spain and how long does it take to to get usually okay okay I got it um actually my case is exceptional one so that's why I was waiting for a residence permit for almost three four months but usually people like me with my work permit needs to wait maybe one month usually one and a half month right now uh, I'm working in a work visa it's called digital nomad visa so I'm working for different international companies and uh, but I pay taxes in Spain why Spanish government decided to do so because right now they have a big problems with uh, employment and uh, they don't have high qualified professionals and that's why they decided to attract more and more professionals and then more and more money so um, yes I'm working um, I'm living in Spain on digital nomad visa, uh, my visa permit for, I think, for three years. And I need to work in Spain for international companies and pay taxes in Spain. Regarding how I got this uh, residence permit, it's a really funny story because uh, I found lawyers and they helped me with everything how to do it, uh, what I should do, what kind of documents I should prepare. I prepared the whole my documents. And I understood uh, like the OHE, um, the social security company, like government, who is trying to like apply for this application, help me with everything and review these applications. Um, they lost my application. So I needed to start all over again. I had maybe 10 days of uh, another visa and uh, I need to do everything uh, in a rush. So uh, okay. we did everything. I applied and I was waiting for one month so everything was maybe for two three months then I applied uh, for fingerprints I applied my photo to police station and then I was waiting for one month and then I got my residence card yes uh, Emma asked uh, uh, like Emma answers this question because I don't know it's a little bit chaotic but yeah. <laughs> yeah in general if you are looking for a job for example not registering your company if you are looking for a job uh, as I don't know foreigner in Spain, is it hard uh, to get residence permit? Because I am sure you have some friends who just moved as a uh, employee, right, for the company in Spain. Yes. Okay. Um, I think right now it's. I think it's harder right now because before maybe it was easier. You have so many like you had so many options: work visa, student visa. Uh, family, the residence family visa. Right now, it's also, I think, in some sense, it's more digitalized and yeah. you can uh, apply everything online. But regarding documents, requirements, it's a whole different world right now. Because right now, they can change uh, requirements, the whole requirements, recruitment process, maybe uh, three, four times per year. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what's going to be next. So, for instance, uh, when I applied for my uh, visa, uh, first they have one requirement, and uh, after on my second application, they changed the whole process. So, uh, for 10 days, I need to find another document to make translations of other documents. So, I think it's right now it's quite hard. There are different types of visa. So, first, a student visa. If we, for instance, if you apply for university, it takes maybe two, three months mm -hmm. to get your student visa. If you're applying for language courses, or it takes maybe five, six months mm -hmm. to wait. And it's really strict with, with, uh, regarding just a typical usual work visa, you need to wait maybe six months, maybe five months. Mm -hmm. uh, family visa, uh, it depends from six months to one year mm -hmm. sometimes. If we're talking about citizenship, you need to live in Spain for 10 years. You need to pass um, Spanish exam, of course, a uh, history exam and you need to apply for citizenship and wait uh, one year, approximately uh, just, say or just saying yes or no. So that's how it usually works. I think right now it's harder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in general, you have to monitor their website on a daily basis, I would say, right? If you're applying right now uh, to, to be informed. Uh, yeah, let's go to talk about uh, registration of your own business. Let's uh, imagine that you got this uh, di digital nomad uh, visa and you moved to Spain and you want to open your own company. Tell me about your experience. Was it hard or difficult? Was it easy or difficult? Was it, uh, I don't know, did it take a lot of time? And was it stressful maybe in some points? Yes, sure. Um, yes, and also, you know what? I forgot there is another type of visa because it's really important to mention about registered visa business. There is uh, also startup visa, 
when you're doing startup and you apply with your business. This is this is one of the hardest ones. Uh, I think maybe 10% of success rates of people and companies going to the startup visa. But they got a lot of stuff, they have uh, a lot of help from Spanish government, but still it's really hard. So, uh, like answering your questions, registering your business, it's quite hard. Not only for maybe Russian speakers, but also for a lot of Europeans. For instance, I had a lot of talks with uh, Germans and Dutch people, and for them it's really hard to register business. But if you have uh, employees and you have like you have a big company, it's really hard and it's really expensive. But if we're talking about me, like individual entrepreneur, because uh, I'm the only one employee in my company, I would say so. It's quite easy, but the first and the furthermore thing is to find a really good assessor. This is the most important yeah. because I had a bit experience with one assessor and uh, she just didn't pay attention to all my documents and uh, what she applied for a tax agency in Spain, it was the whole wrong and I had a lot of problems. So first you need to find a really good personal assessor. So, and with a cool and good, awesome assessor, you can professional one, you can uh, register your business within two, three days, really. Uh -huh. Yes, so, but you need okay. to prepare the whole documents and you need to find a really professional. I, I got lucky because uh, I was just uh, walking on the street and I found the office. Uh, of this assessors and I found my assessor and she really helped me with everything and right now working with her and she's really nice and she's doing her job so I think th the main uh, advice will be to find a good assessor and he can help you within three four days to apply for uh, registering your business register your business yeah yeah so it's uh, it's a typical and common practice to work with assessor there and if you are talking about how much should you spend on on her services, uh, is it a lot in general? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, regarding assessor, every Spanish has its own assessor. It's like I don't know, like like doctor or maybe psychologist. Like everyone has assessor, and no one wants to share um, like a private number of assessor. So you need to find your own assessor. So it takes uh, for me. It takes. It took maybe two months to find a really good assessor. And regarding a uh, fee, I pay 70 euros per month for all services. Plus, uh, if we're talking about social security, she's helping with social security too. I pay for social security 86 or maybe 85 euros per month. Regarding taxes, uh, it depends, but it's usually 18, 20%, yes, per quarter doesn't uh, seem so much so i think no. it's it's affordable right when when yes. someone can help you and s solve so many problems of yours great so let's talk a little bit we start about talking about costs and uh, expenses let's talk about cost of living in spain you are living in uh, madrid right uh, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Right, right now no but i was uh, like you know uh, traveling to madrid and i was living sometime in barcelona so i understand yeah. the prices in different provinces and in the big cities yeah. so i can compare for you if you want yeah so can you tell us um how much do you need to live comfortably in in spain in general of course i understand uh, that in capital uh it, it can be more in big cities it can be more but in general how much do uh, you need to spend on uh, rent on food and on clothes like this is basics right uh to live comfortably in spain um, yeah, sure. Um, I think I need to divide into two topics. Yeah. So the so first one, it will be big cities like Madrid, Valencia, Barcelona, maybe Marbella in San Sebastián. It's a really expensive city, but okay, we'll, we will take uh, Madrid and Barcelona. Um, it's really expensive. I would say I remember Madrid was uh, one, uh, I think it was one of the most expensive cities in Europe, actually last year so like in top 10 i think it's uh, it took maybe second or third place i can remember exactly but yeah so regarding rent um it depends in uh, what kind of neighborhood you're living right now for instance if it's uh, quite far away from city center you can find a really cool apartment maybe starting from 800 euros maybe 1000 euros per month it's uh, without any fees for water, for gas, because uh, I don't know how it works in Madrid right now, because before it was not so expensive. Right now, I think it's more expensive. 
um, if you want to live in city center, you cannot uh, find uh, apartments uh, less than uh, 1000 euro, it's impossible. So I would say for comfortable life in Madrid, uh, you can pay maybe 1500 euros starting from this price. You can find a really cool apartment, a small one, I would say so, maybe old one. But still, it's really nice and you have uh, all subway stations and uh, all, I would say, landmarks you can go there. Or maybe you can live in city center and you have a lot of activities. Mm, regarding food, um, if we're talking about just going to grocery store, um, I think maybe to, you know, if you live like a one person, maybe you need 150 euros per month for food. But if you want to live with another person, maybe with a partner or friends or family, you need maybe 200, uh, 250 euros, maybe 300 euros. It depends. It's also oh, it's not so expensive to get food there if you are not going yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yes. 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 And it's, it's really important because I just want to make sure because in Germany, it's really expensive to buy food. But here in Spain, it's, uh, I think, cheap in that sense, but still I feel inflation, price inflation right now and everything is getting more and more expensive, but uh, I don't worry about this. Um, if we're talking about all this uh, taxes, security stuff, um, I pay almost 200 euros and that's okay, I mentioned before. Um, regarding uh, regarding maybe some uh, extra activities, for instance, you want to go out with friends or you want to pay for yoga, for a gym, um, usually you need maybe five, six hundred euros per month, yes, and it will be okay and it, it can afford uh, almost everything. Regarding clothes, styling, maybe, I don't know, skincare routine, um, you need maybe three, four hundred euros, I would say so. Because despite the fact that uh, like clothes and accessories in Spain are quite cheap, but still, um, you need to pay, you need to pay, and also they have this tax, it's called EVA, so you need to also to pay this tax, it's included, of course, uh, into like recipe, but still, you need to pay for this, and sometimes it can be a little bit expensive. Um, also, I pay for my medical insurance, it's really important, because everyone in Spain has medical insurance, and per year I pay 500 euros per month, I have a really cheap one, but usually, um, usually it costs maybe five seven hundred euro per year per year uh -huh. uh, sorry per year yeah, so you need to year. yeah, yeah per year. thinking hmm, so much for insurance <laughs> for year, yeah <laughs> so sorry um i think yes and maybe i have also you know some money for some i would say emergencies because it's yeah. really important and usually for per month i have this uh, emergency account and usually it consists maybe um, five, six hundred euros per month just to make sure everything is going to be okay. And by the way, if you want to rent a car, because uh, I'm driving right now, in Madrid you need to pay at least uh, six hundred euros per month for a car. Yes, so it's also expensive, it's not so expensive, but still, uh, if you don't have a car, uh, you need to rent a car, but I think in Madrid and Barcelona you can use subway stations and buses, but in different provinces it's different. It's like, it's like a big city. Regarding other provinces, small cities, it's maybe two times cheaper, I would say so. Yes, for instance, uh, for rent, uh, there is a little town, Russian-speaking town, it's called Terdeja. Uh, I think rent a flat here can be uh, from five, uh, 500 and to 800 euros per month. So I think it's cheaper and the city center and beach is quite near. About food is the same, uh, renting car can be a little bit cheaper, uh, medical insurance, everything almost the same, but regarding clothes also it can be cheaper, maybe 100 euros less. But you know, uh, in Spain, especially in little provinces, uh, everything is cheaper, like if you want to go out, it's also cheaper. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, for leisure activities, uh, it's also maybe 200 euros less. So if you're comparing uh, big cities and little towns and provinces, um, I think uh, it's for, for the start, it's better to live in province, just to start over to understand how everything is working. And if you're ready and you feel comfortable, you can move to big cities. So I think I answer your question. I don't know, it's a bit chaotic, <laughs> but I yeah. hope so. No, 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 no. So if you are living in big cities, you need approximately 2,000 euros 
right uh, maybe a bit more and if you're living in the smallest uh, cities it can be 1200 1, 1500 euros right so yeah great so it sounds good because if you if you have like a good job i think it can it, it is uh, makeable so uh it's doable i would say so uh let's go further uh can you please tell me a little bit about people uh like uh whether they are friendly to foreigners and uh, whether you felt any kind of racism uh, because you are a foreigner in Spain because in different countries of course it's very different so it would be great to hear your experience um yes sure I think um, Spanish people they are so friendly uh, based on my experience they are so friendly and you know if you don't know their native language Spanish they will always help you they will always try to understand what do you want from them and it's really important because uh, if we compare portugal or in france it's uh, almost impossible to live without uh, portuguese or maybe uh, or french so i think it's really important uh, to understand that they are really friendly they can help you and uh, they're really nice so i don't face a big discrimination from spanish people because they're really friendly, they don't care about this. They just uh, care about your personality and what kind of person you are. So I think this is the most important. And they always uh, so happy. They can help you with everything. And they, you know, they don't wait for something in your return. I think this is really important. So for me, Spanish people, they really um, friendly. But I don't think in big cities because in big cities, of course, you can face some discrimination and in big cities people are colder, I would say so, and they arrogant in that way. But I live in province and everyone is friendly. Everyone's really friendly and for instance, I know this person for five minutes, but he can invite me to his family house. And that's totally okay. And they can invite you, or you can meet the whole family and you can spend vacation with them. And for them, it's totally okay. But in big cities, I don't think so. But uh, I think in general, they're friendly and they're really nice. And you can talk with them. At least you don't know Spanish on a fluent level. Yeah. So uh, your recommendation to move to uh, smaller cities make more and more sense, right? So to cope with this uh, stress, because usually when you move abroad, you, you will feel stress anyway. Great. So uh, talking about the Spanish language. So in daily uh, like um, daily activities and if you if you are going out uh, as I understand they speak English right they can communicate in English with you a bit uh, I would say with gestures a bit yeah. but they can understand but usually I speak Spanish because right now I'm learning Spanish and for me it's important to understand everything is going around me yeah. and uh, also you know I think it's kind of respect to their culture and to what they like invited me and let me stay especially the Spanish government so I try to learn Spanish I'm learning Spanish right now and I think I understand maybe 70% of people are talking to me right now I don't speak fluently I can uh, solve so many questions right now but regarding bureaucracy laws um, it can be different so sometimes I need the help but mostly, yes, I speak Spanish. Uh, they can understand English, but if they don't understand English, they can help you. They can use translator. It's not, yes, it's not a big problem. They always will help you. Always, always. Great. And the possibility, uh, find when, when you are looking for a job, for example, with a Spanish company or international company that is functioning in Spain, is it mandatory to know the Spanish language or you can go with English? It depends. I think when you work for big companies and in big cities, I think yes, uh, in English is mandatory, of course, but Spanish, no. They can just, you know, uh, don't pay attention if you know Spanish or not. But still, there are some companies and for them it's more applicable, it's easier when you speak Spanish. And for them, uh, it's really important. So I think it depends. It depends on every case, on every company. But right now, I see a lot of companies, they don't require Spanish right now. But before, maybe 10 years ago, it was the most important thing. Right now, it's less important. And they even tell you like, okay, you don't know Spanish, no worries. We can help you. 
And mm -hmm. usually sometimes I heard some stories when a person, he came to like international company, but most of the people, they speak Spanish and they yeah. use translators to help this guy right. to, yes, just to understand what is going on. And I think this is the best part of being in Spain. They will help you. But at least I heard and I experienced. Of course, there are some other extra um, examples, but still I believe Spanish one of the most uh, the friendliest people in the world, I would say. And so there are um, opportunities with only English. You can go there and move there. Yes, and uh, maybe I would like to ask you in the end, what advice, what recommendations uh, you would give to people who want to move to Spain as an uh, employee, as a student, as a digital nomad? What would you say to them before, what should they consider before moving to Spain? Um, I would say I have maybe three tips, maybe three advice. First yes. one, don't be afraid of moving to another country because a lot of people, they're so afraid to move to another country to give up everything they have in their like motherland. And I totally understand, I got it, but still it's just such a great adventure to start and uh, just to understand who you are. Second, uh, I think this kind of advice connected to second one, just be true to yourself. Just don't accept some things you don't like. And uh, I think our life is a journey to understand who we are and to express ourselves and just to understand, understand what kind of person we are. So I think you just need to be true yourself and if you don't like something, just say no. And I think it's really important. And third option, um, be patient, I think, because you cannot achieve everything within 10 days and one month. You need some time. You need maybe one year, two years, five years, or even 10 years to feel comfortable in Spain. So you just need to take yourself time and be patient with language, with the bureaucratic issues, with people around, just be patient. It's just life, it's uh, just your life, your process, uh, how you going everything through so that's my three advices i will take this is like the philosophy of my channel so <laughs> yeah just like giving what i am always advocating for yeah thank you so much uh for participating it was really great to hear and to listen to your experience i'm sure it's very useful for the people who are planning to move to spain or who are already in spain just for the short period of time and i hope that in we will see you in our next episodes. Uh, if you like this video, I'm sure that you will like another of my video here in the screen. Uh, please watch it and let me know in the comments uh, what topics you want to see the videos about and who do you want me to have uh, interviews with. See you in my next videos.